Welcome back to the show. Always important to ask your guest how to pronounce their last name before you go live on television. Thank God I did because uh, my next guest uh, is a shamanic life coach with uh, Zest for Your Life and Zest Your Business. I am joined by Linda Bobulik. Welcome to the show, Linda. Great to have you. Oh, I would have just destroyed your last name. I'm so glad I asked. Um, this, you've been on an incredible journey, Linda. You and I met back in 2015, um, but since then you've gone on, a, on an amazing journey. Tell me about your, your, your personal journey. Well, the interesting thing is it started in 2003 when I went on my first vision quest, but I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I didn't want anybody to think I was too woo-woo. And in 2015 when we met, it was to interview me when I launched my book. Yeah. And the book is encoded with those shamanic teachings, but I didn't tell anybody. What I'm discovering now is everybody knew anyway. <laughs> I was like, really? Well, I go, you know, I'm embracing the shamanic, my shamanic life path, and they're going, right. yay, and it's like, we knew. Yeah, <laughs> but some people don't even know what shamanic is, you know, in, in general, so, so describe that for us. Well, shamanism is the oldest spiritual path on the planet. So when we think of that, it predates all religion. Right. And it's right. not attached to any religion. It doesn't have any dogma, but it has the principles in common that all religions have. Okay. Which is, you know, be connected with yourself, your soul in some religions they'll call that, with others, community is hugely important, and be connected with nature. Honor the sun, the stars, the moon, the snow, Right, yeah. So what's the biggest lesson you've learned so far on, on this journey? Well, the biggest change in me was, you know, we all go through traumas and all kinds of stuff in our lives. It was to open my heart. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, through this, you've learned the teaching of, of these sacred practices. What, what are some of those sacred practices that, that you've learned over time? Well, the very first sacred practice that I teach anyone is to be ready to receive. Hmm. Because if someone's handing you a gift and you don't put your hands out and you're not ready to receive, you're not gonna get it. Right. You were ready to receive. So how do you become ready though? I mean, you know, it's easy for me to say it, oh, tomorrow I'm gonna become ready to receive, but I'm, I'm not in a position to do it, right? Because I, I, I guess, it is it a mindset alone? You've done it. How do you think you got into <laughs> Ottawa? You were ready to receive. Yeah. Well, how did you get to Montreal? Yeah, yeah. You I saw understand. the offer, you were ready to receive, you took it. Right. So everything that we have, we have to be ready to receive. So if you don't have something, then you aren't ready to receive it. So do we put barriers up then, Linda, Absolutely. do you think? Do you think? So like, why? Why, why do we do that to ourselves? We, our image makers formed us in a certain way. Who do you think you are? Why do you think you deserve that? Mm. You know, are you crazy? That's too big a dream. Whatever it is, and we tell stories in our heads. Yeah. We tell ourselves the story. That. I, I do and, that. For and we sure. believe them. Yeah. And you know what? We yeah. need to fire that committee that's living in there. They're not paying rent, so throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're also an author. Tell me about uh, tell me about Zest for Life. How this book came about. Zest for Life uh, came about when I was in a circle of women. It was a dream circle. I'll okay. say that out loud now. That's a, you're allowed. Yeah. It, it was a dream circle. And I said something, and one of the women said, you know, if you did a workshop on that, I'd come. Really? So okay. I put a workshop together, and I put a series of four workshops together, and then I did it again. I saw the women change right before my eyes. Really? Eh? And then I did a series again, added on a vision board exercise, and I knew then that I had proven and validated the materials, which is what I do with everything now. I prove right. and validate, so it's not just the story in my head that mm. I think works. Right. And um, then I wrote it as a manuscript, got it published. Dr. Joe Vitale of The Secret endorsed it. Wow, that is big. That is huge. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, you mentioned uh, Dreamer's Circle. Yes. That you can now say that out loud, so now I'm intrigued. What, what is a dreamer's circle? We would gather together, we would document our dreams, and there's different ways of doing it, but it's not dream analysis. So if we would say our dream, each individual, and then I would repeat my dream, and you okay. would feel, go into the dream, and you'd say, when I dream this dream, 
the color red stands out for me, or for me probably the color orange. Uh, you would say, and then I felt this way. So I would give you a different interpretation on your own dream, so okay. I could step in deeper. Right. So it's very much like looking at Chantal's paintings. Yeah. You know, yeah, you yeah. look at them once and you think, oh, that's a nice giraffe. And then you look at it more and then you can feel what's going on in there. Great way to describe it, for mm -hmm. sure. You mentioned colors and mm -hmm. you said your colors, so someone might say red and your color is orange. So you have to tell me about color. Why is that important? Well, the color orange came about when I did my formal shamanic studies and I was introduced to whatever your date of birth is. It comes with an animal totem, it comes with a flower, and it comes with the color. Okay, I didn't know that. I certainly knew the animal totem, but I, I did not know about the flower and, and the color. What, 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 do, what does the flower and the color represent then? Does it represent anything in particular? Well, it's sort of, you could draw the strings to anything you want. Right. But the okay. flower, I'm a Scorpio. Okay. So my color is orange, which I never wore orange before, and now I do a right. lot. I drive an orange nice. car. Do you? I love uh, it. I do, an orange Volkswagen Beetle. Nice. And um, then my flower is a thistle. A thistle? Well, look I at the thistles, similarities actually. between a thistle and a Scorpio. Yeah, I can see that. And the animal right. totem is a snake. I, 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 the, there's a connection with all three, for <laughs> sure. No, I'm serious. I, 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 I recognize what you're saying. Um, okay, uh, before I let you go here, how can people get in touch with you if, they, if they'd like to work with you? My email is linda at lindababulik.com, and okay. that's my website. My book's available on amazon.ca. Number Amazon. one bestseller, by the way, everybody at home. I just yes. I had to get that in there Thank before, you. before we ran out of time. Um, during the break, I'm going to ask you what, what Sagittarius Sagittarius is now because that that's maybe it's an elk an elk but I don't I need to know the color we'll be right back after this